Ever wonder what Dipper and Mabel listen to when they're not tending to the mystery shack or trying to solve the multitudinous mysteries of the journals? So do we. That's why we at Channel Frederator decided to look into the matter and take a few educated guesses. Parody songs come up in the show at a number of key points. Baba's Dancing Girl and the 80s's crowd pleasingness song Don't Start Unbelieving are hilarious and wonderful. But we wanted to translate those into real world music. You can't know if the songs here are songs that exist in this universe. That said, we know from Bill Cipher's AMA that there's at least some crossover. Bill's favourite music is 10 hours writhing shepherd tone after all. I'm One Chop and I've already done the courtesy of <coughs> borrowing Dipper and Mabel's iPods so we can take a quick peek at their favourite tunes. Let's dive in. First on Dipper's playlist is Head Over Heels by Tears For Fears. Dipper and Mabel both have soft spots for 80s music. Dipper does want to be alone with Wendy to talk about the weather or anything else for that matter. He also enjoys playing air synth at the beginning of the song. If Dipper were to play an instrument, my money would be on the guitar. Next we have Madonna with Like a Virgin. As Dipper kept exploring 80s pop, he stumbled into music way more embarrassing than Baba. That, of course, sported the unfortunate characteristic of being incredibly infectious. Like a Virgin is the best song Dipper wishes he never heard. So far, no one's caught him singing along to it, but he lives in constant fear of Stan and or Mabel materialising around a corner while he belts out the chorus. Next, Gorillas with On Melancholy Hill. A quintessential song for those suffering from unrequited love. Dipper saves it for when his pursuit of Wendy is at its lowest point, and prefers listening to it while lying face up in his bed and following up with a good heartbroken groan. <sighs> Next is Meet the Elements by They Might Be Giants. Dipper's a smart guy, and he likes songs that appeal to his intellect. Meet the Elements isn't the most complicated song, but he still likes it, and as an added bonus, it's a song about change, which has been on his mind a lot. They're growing up, and things are changing a lot. So a song that looks at change as neither good nor bad, but just the reality of life, appeals to him. Next is a good old classic, Michael Jackson with Smooth Criminal. Every day, Dipper tries to get some quality time in front of the bathroom mirror to practice his moonwalk. He imagines himself as the romanticised hero come to save Annie. Next, the Decemberists with The Sporting Life. Dipper likes the Decemberists because their advanced vocabulary makes him feel smarter. He took a particular shining to this song because he had a similar experience playing Little League Soccer in 2010. J Diller, EMC Squared, Instrumental. Dipper stumbled upon this song while going down a Google hole as he was researching new strategies for dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons. He later learned that J Diller is widely considered hip and continues to feel proud of himself that he discovered Diller first of anyone he knows. In his half-hearted belief, this, in turn, makes him hip. Next is the good old Ghostbusters theme song. Dipper knows the Ghostbusters theme is cliche, but he was called to the Northwest Mansion to bust a ghost. He can resist the urge to hum it on the walk over. You can fight a ghost, but you can't fight the Ghostbusters theme. Muse, Knights of Sidonia. Pump up songs are a particular favourite of Dipper's, and Knights of Sidonia makes him feel like he's a majestic knight galloping through the universe upon his mighty steed. With that last refrain stuck in his head, Dipper can fight Bill Cipher all day. Plus, what kid nowadays doesn't like Muse when they're 12 or 13 or, you know, way older? Next is York. Army of Me, another excellent pump-up song and one of Dipper's favourite confidence boosters to boot. Additionally, he often uses the bass line to practice his head banging. In the bathroom mirror as always. He'll never admit it out loud, but Dipper likes Bjork's swan dress. And finally on Dipper's playlist, Queen with Flash Gordon. Many boys discover Queen in middle school and Dipper is no exception. Despite his sense of humility and all the adrenaline pumping through his veins, Dipper couldn't get the so dog of the universe bit out of his head as he and Mabel were being chased by Bill in the pyramid. Kicking off Mabel's playlist is Backstreet Boys Larger Than Life. Backstreet Boys are one of the many real world versions of several times. They're an ideal addition to Mabel's boy band catalog as singing along with Larger Than Life has a way of making her feel like a real champ. In fact, it's her newest karaoke go-to. Side note, Mabel loves everyone and everything. The fact that we're putting a Backstreet Boys song on here doesn't mean she weighs in on the Backstreet Boys versus NSYNC. 
Next is Everything is Awesome from the Lego Movie. Mabel sings this around the Mystery Shack all the time. It annoys the bejeebas out of Grunkle Stan to the point where he banned this song and all things Lego Movie related, but Mabel ignores this rule. Next is Piggies by the Beatles. Mabel doesn't care this song makes fun of the bourgeois, he just cares that he says the word Piggies. She has a full dance routine choreographed with Waddles. Next, Pink Floyd with the Gnome. Little known fact that we totally made up. Mabel loves Sid Barrett era of Pink Floyd, purely for its oddball quality. However, she wasn't able to bring herself to listen to this song for a couple months after the whole gnome wife debacle. Next is Sam Cooke with Cupid. When Mabel was in the throes of her career as a matchmaker, she considered Cupid one of the many potential theme songs for her budding business. After the ordeal with the love god, she saved it for special occasions. Next is Beastie Boys with Intergalactic. Mabel's ideal pump-up song. It's helpful for dealing with multidimensional villains. Unlike Dipper, Mabel has no problem selling her performances. Most of her friends think she has accomplished the impossible feat of memorizing all the lyrics, but truth is, she still fakes her way through about half of it. Next is Toon Yards with Business. Mel Garbus is Mabel's role model. She has tried emulating Garbus's face paint from the business music video a couple times, to surprising success. This is one of her favorite songs to shout along to. She's even called Dipper Hermit on several occasions. Next is Parliament with Flashlight. Many people claim to have spirit animals, but Funk is Mabel's spirit music. She can listen to the 11 minute extended version of the song and still keep dancing even after Candy and Grenda have retired to the benches. Finally, Sly and the Family Stone with Hot Fun in the Summertime. We all know how much Mabel loves summer. She was planning on playing this song at least five times during her and Dipper's 13th birthday party. She doesn't quite realize the double meaning of the phrase hot fun yet. Rounding things off, we've got a playlist of music that both Dipper and Mabel enjoy equally. First up is Toto with Africa. Like we said earlier, both Dipper and Mabel contain the adoration 80s music that's common in people who are to live in the 80s. Toto is one of their newer discoveries, and for a solid week they blasted this song in the attic while spinning with palms outstretched in slow, triumphant circles, as if they were experiencing the rain down in Africa first time. Grunkle Stan always hated this song. Song, being more of a Springsteen man himself, and put it on the same band list as Everything Is Awesome. Next, Sparks with Mustache. Mabel used this song to cheer up Dipper after his clash with the Manators. She introduced a dance comprised of placing your finger beneath your nose and pretending you had a real mustache. At one point, Mabel tried to take the routine to the next level through taking tweezers and stealing some of Grunkle Stan's arm hairs whilst he was still asleep. This, of course, failed, and Mustache was placed on an even deeper band list than Everything Is Awesome or Toad. The punishment for breaking the band was cleaning Stan's hairs out of the sink and shower for the rest of the summer. Black Sabbath and Paranoid After the Toto and Sparks incidents, Grunkle Stan attempted to initiate Dipper and Maple into the world of classic rock, and he very much started with the deep dark world of Black Sabbath. Dipper and Maple loved Paranoid for its extra hard rocking qualities and started blasting it every night while jumping on their beds. Stan added Paranoid to the band list and gave up on cultivating Dipper and Maple's music tastes. Next, we've got got the residence with Constantinople. Neither Dipper nor Mabel remembers which one of them stumbled on this song, or how. Mabel thinks she may have used it to underscore history projects on the Roman Empire, but has a hard time remembering the cause of most of her teacher's grimaces. Regardless, they remain cautiously intrigued by this song. One time they played it for Zeus and he ran out of the room. Things getting a bit anime with the pillows, ride on shooting star. McGucket wasn't the only person to receive personal anime lessons from Zeus in a very risky move, he introduced Dipper and Mabel into the slight deeper cuts of the genre with Booty Cooney because it's short and he thought Mabel might like Haruko. The two of them were overwhelmed by the intense visual style of the series but liked it overall and had the ending theme stuck in their heads for weeks afterwards. Finally, David Bowie with Changes. Changes was playing on the radio as Dipper and Mabel climbed into their parents' car fresh off the bus from Gravity Falls. Enormous coincidence aside, it's become their anthem for embracing the unknowns of the future, as well as a nice melancholic reminder of their time in 
Gravity Falls. And there you have it. Do you agree with our version of their playlist? Have any additions of your own? Tell us in the comments below. Check out some of these artists if you've never heard of them. And afterwards, you can visit our multitude of Gravity Falls related videos. Frederick's online store, StashRite, is offering a gift card worth $1,000 to buy your plushies and t-shirts and other stuff from your favorite cartoons and web animating people. And all you need to enter the sweepstakes is your email address. Contest rules apply and the link is in the description. Also, all Shipping in the US is free, or if you are outside the US, Dash Riot is taking $5 off the shipping cost. Both these offers end on April the 30th. And remember, Frederator loves you.